this, 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 okay. So, welcome back. Um, now we have the last regular talk of the day. Uh, after that, we have a little hands-on session. Um, but now we have Preet, who will tell us about Libreboot, which is actually the first open source firmware that I personally run on a system that I used. Um, so this wasn't, it's not just theory, but uh, it's actually usable. So uh, yes, uh, please welcome with me, Preet, and enjoy the talk. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, and good afternoon. Even though uh, my talk is uh, light only, but the topic which I am trying to focus and which I am trying to highlight, that is very heavy. Yeah. So I hope uh, you help me uh, to find out the, if there is any gap or is there something as an open community uh, we can contribute to us to Libreboot. Okay. So first, why we are discussing about uh, Libreboot and about open source and all. So uh, like uh, any enterprise, any country, any society, they have their own vision. Okay. And if we talk about the global vision, so in the global vision, what we see, the global vision is next generation civilization. Uh, I will just try to connect the dot with the Libreboot. And I just want to highlight one topic. That's why I'm just referring this use case. So to build this complex, connected, and visionary ecosystem, we can realize that every piece in this ecosystem is relating some hardware, some software, right? And everything is connected. There is no isolated thing in the world, right? So even every isolated system component in this world is having dependency or having impact on some other system or maybe getting impacted by others. There is no isolated thing in this world, right? You named it and we are ready to discuss that thing. I would be happy to know about that if there is something. So during last few decades, we had seen there is a significant improvement in hardware capacity, right? We know all these things. So uh, whatever capacity we need in CPU, RAM, network bandwidth, or, or let's say gateway, there is plenty of hardware which support like uh, it, it started with MB, GB, TB, and Jettabyte, and you named it actually, it is there. And obviously, to, uh, there are plenty of software as well, multi-layer software with uh, bundled software are there, which generally runs on that. Correct? All we agree, right? But don't we think but uh, that uh, during this progressive journey, we had uh, intentionally or unintentionally missed one of the part. We had missed that bridge which follow uh, basically a, this uh, successful journey along with the hardware and software. Correct. I'm talking about the firmware. Right? Are you agree with me? Are you agree with me? All right? Okay. So everywhere where you go, you, the, 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 we talk about hardware, we talk about software. Oh, our software can do this thing. This is the product, whether it is an open source or whether it is a you know, proprietary product. You get everything, even AI you talk about. There are so many products, right? But what about firmware? Why? Firmware is the most important things which generally tells. Firmware is the thing which generally, your software is a kid. Firmware teach that kid, ki, okay, this is how your first step should be. This is how you have to move forward. This is how you have to take two step long jump or short, uh, short jump and you have to go straight and all, right? So was this, uh, don't you think is, uh, it was a biased behavior? Now the question is, this biased behavior was intentional or unintentional? We should acknowledge that due to this biased behavior, we had created a very big gap. I am saying again, a very big gap between software and hardware. We are focusing on the cyber security, we are focusing on uh, um, uh, product development, agility, and so many things. But we never talked about the firmware. Now, tell, uh, now let me tell you, uh, it was biased. In my opinion, it was biased. Intentionally, we left out this piece of work. Because when firmware started, I think as per my knowledge and as per the information which is available on the internet, Okay, of course we learn from internet only and obviously after having discussion with a uh, few knowledgeable person, yeah. So, uh, when, for, uh, when, when this start journey started, uh, so I think IB, it started by IBM and then it, it was taken over by the Intel, right. So, at that time they decided not to support such kind of open source firmware which is not running their proprietary things. 
otherwise they won't uh, be able to build their empire what they are running now so as per my view it was intentionally it was the biased behavior now see how this biased behavior has impacted so nowadays okay what is the primary thing uh, which generally we focus it doesn't matter it's a, it's, a, it's a small application big application it's an enterprise application it's a very small isolated application there is only one thing which we just we, we start the talk about what is that thing do we talk about the feature no that is secondary thing do we talk about uh, the, the expenditure capex of it? no the very first thing we talk about the security are you agree with me are you agree with me feature when, whenever you go to any product company or whenever you go to your customer whenever you propose something the very first question is is it secure okay and then when it come to secure we always talk about ki okay yeah yeah we, there are so many uh, security layers are there in the software right they check uh, like uh, the, what kind of traffic is coming in uh, what is the port what is the protocol and everything we talk about that thing right but we never ever discuss ki the, is there something which is go beyond the software right so today i am just trying to touch base that point only that security which is basically major impact yeah so this is about me uh, i'm uh, preet uh, and i'm learning and leveraging my learning uh, since last 12 year this is my uh, qr code of uh, linkedin so happy to uh, if you guys uh, connect with me i'm part of a few of the community uh, one of them is gartner peer community aws security group and uh, kubernetes and uh, i'm global speaker few of the uh, event i generally join to extend my knowledge to learn from the community right okay so if i move next yeah so uh, cyber attack we know but uh, there are few website you can see uh, which generally tells cyber attack is uh, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, ratio and the kind of uh, pattern it shows it is happening uh, real time basis and there are few website which generally uh, show you as a dashboard the cyber attack which is happening so this is one okay uh, just uh, like you can see this is real time i mean i just captured the video because i was not aware whether uh, internet will be available or not so that you can see cyber attack now i don't know what's running behind the engine is it real or is it it is just a marketing propaganda the product company are trying to showcase right it might be possible they just want to create a very big fear in front of everyone ki okay just go buy this one so people can uh, stop even buying their food but they will buy this thing first okay this is more uh, important than their food yeah yeah but if we see the news so these are the some uh, news is from the uh, authenticated uh, sources it's basically by collected this screenshot uh, related uh, from the bbc that's i think one of the reliable source and there are few more so uh, these news are very common nowadays so the cyber attack and all there are few news actually which generally uh, you can find in some corner those are also relevant to cyber attack but they don't directly depict that those are relevant to software cyber attack and all so like for example on the top right side uh, you can see there are three news which i try to depict that is log ax and uh, then uh, uefi uh, root root kit any one of you have I, i'm pretty sure you must have heard about root kit but just want to check how many of you know about uh, root kit great then i am happy at then i am happy <laughs> uh, because this is the point which i want to highlight and this is the point which i want to bring today yeah yeah okay so it means uh, there is a lot many things uh, to learn uh, from this word and from each other yeah so global vision again i'm trying to connect the dots so what we need to uh, what we need is just a strong foundation here is strong foundation i am talking about uh, like like a building i try to depict it as a building the firmware so firmware is the most important thing over here so will it not be a good idea to appreciate that the bridge which is so called firmware we need to put put focus on that and we need to make our uh, we need to uh, uh, appreciate and we need to work something which generally support all kind of thing on the firmware side so doesn't matter it is a light or it is a heavy okay so uh, in today's talk actually uh, what i am trying to highlight is uh, what is firmware just i'll start with the basic so uh, just a few lines on what is the firmware how it works and what was the need to change the firmware what was the loopholes in the firm uh, uh, multiple kind of firmware okay and why it is needed and why we need to keep working on the firmware okay 
So this is from the history. So uh, I try to depict here how it started. It started from the vacuum tube, and in the respective era, I try to depict actually what was the base of firmware, how it started, and what was the core focus. So we can see from the uh, like earlier, it was just focusing on the just uh, you know uh, uh, loading uh, loading uh, the operating system feature of on the respective hardware and support their feature. Initially, that was the uh, core focus, but later. When uh, things streamline, then uh, as uh, we are uh, human being, we are the intelligent species, species over the uh, earth or, or, or across the universe. So we started, okay, let's go beyond that. Okay, so then we started, okay, let's make it more flexible. Let's uh, let's try to connect the things so that it can bring some value to society, and there uh, it can uh, you know uh, be progressive for the innovation wheel of innovation. So then we started uh, talking about uh, putting the uh, firmware and the feature capability on the flash. Then we started working on the mobile device firmware for mobile devices. Then IoT started, okay, and then IoT embedded system started. So this th this journey is going to be continued. Agree with me? This journey is going to be continued. We are. Uh, we we are going to increase the complexity in the global network yeah we are not going to resolve it we are increasing the complexity but at the same time we have to make sure the kind of complexity we are increasing that is sustainable or uh, that is going to help yeah so now we'll come to the bios the term bios it was basically uh, coined in 1975 somewhere okay so initially as i mentioned it was uh, uh, originated and the first BIOS version, which was very base in uh, by the uh, some of the IBM engineer, and later uh, it was fine tuned and acquired by Intel. Okay, so uh, BIOS job is basically initialize post uh, post is basically uh, uh, test uh, power on uh, self test and then then booting process, CMO setup, lower level hardware control, and ACPI. Basically, uh, these, these these are the basic functionality which generally BIOS does, right? So I'm sure I I don't need to uh, have a detail uh, discussion on this one. Now the, the talk about the challenges. Why there are challenges in the BIOS? So obviously all we know uh, limited user interface because it was uh, text based, right? And then hardware and storage limitation. So initially when BIOS started, the the, the driver and the drives actually were the pre-built. So whatever pre-built is installed, only that was only supportive. There is nothing else. So that was one of the challenges. Then booting time. Actually, it was very limited store with 16-bit uh, architecture. So obviously, there will be limitation. And then, uh, as I mentioned, device uh, support. And the most important part, security vulnerability, which was there from the BIOS, and which is still there, and which is going to be there. Yeah, Because every day, we bring some new things. So uh, apart from some new things, we bring vulnerability as well. Because we don't know where it will open some gate, and we close it, or like. The even even uh, we try to close some existing gap, but it still it will bring some new uh, new new open uh, gate for someone. It's only a picture that is invisible. Uh, it is uh, it might be invisible for some time, but the moment it is explored, then you are gone. Yeah. So uh, secured uh, lack of networking capabilities and then inflexibility, of course, where uh, if we want to change something. So these are basically uh, uh, challenges. So what are the security threat? Uh, generally, what are the security threats? The security is the point which I mentioned, I try to uh, highlight. Malware, and uh, if somebody take control of system, then uh, I try to just put a uh, punchline. So your smart home is no smart enough now. <laughs> if somebody take control of your uh, uh, connected home, then your AC, instead of cooling, it will just force you to run away from the home. So there are so many things, yeah, yeah, and, and then point, uh, point in time hacking. So specifically, if somebody take control, uh, then I think at any point of time, if something has to be done, specifically that can be executed, right? Even uh, anybody can watch. These are the normal thing in terms of security uh, threat. Yeah, even I tried to depict one uh, reference over here in uh, one of the uh, one of the hack was done in front of uh, um, my, my, uh, that was in uh, Microsoft uh, seminar, and that was depicted how it can be done. And the term which was coined at that time that was the rootkit. So what is this rootkit actually? Okay. So uh, if I go, so yes, rootkit, the malware of future. What is your opinion on that? Uh, are you agree with me or not? So just uh, can you just if you can scan this code and put your opinion. What do you think? What is going to be the malware of future? If you can scan, uh, I just want to get your opinion on that. It is basically Manti uh, code. 
can you just bring your uh, yeah mobile device Persistence in firmware, okay. What do you, okay, AI. Less response, I'm good, I'm happy, yeah. There is no, <laughs> no more thing to discuss then, yeah. Cryptid code, ah. Uh. Okay. Yeah, allow me for a sec. Yeah. Oh, where is it? Allow me for a moment. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sometime. Okay, so the malware of future, that is, of course, a root kid. Okay. And why uh, that is a malware of future we talked about? First of all, what is a root kit? Okay. So basically, attacker, generally, we know how, how, the ma how malware works. So a root kit is basically when. Uh, uh, any any attacker install uh, software, okay, uh, but that is not in OS or that is not via some uh, you know spam mail or something. They will basically uh, install malicious code in the firmware, okay. They 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 install it in firmware. Now uh, there is a very big question: How it is possible to install a software in the firmware? Right? It's not easy. But yeah, there are so many ways actually. Uh, uh, and th these are a few of the way uh, basically which I try to depict over here. So first of all, what is rootkit? It's a dangerous malware. It is masked. It is invisible, hard to scan, quite impossible to detect, and it's able to survive. These are the three terms which generally can be taken very seriously uh, by everyone. Hard to scan, quite impossible to detect, and able to survive. So th these are the uh, different uh, kind of rootkit which can be uh, applicable or which can be presented. Uh, firmware rootkit, it is in firmware. Uh, bootloader uh, rootkit, it change behavior of your uh, bootloader. Then memory rootkit, it works in memory only. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is a way. You restart your system, your memory washed away, and again you have fresh clean memory. But again it will come back in memory. Yeah. So you just keep repeating of cycle. right? Uh, so then application rootkit is specific to some application only. So let's say, for example, some rootkit is applicable on Notepad application. So the moment you open Notepad application, only Notepad application will get impacted, not other application kind of thing. And then kernel mode rootkit. Right, so these are the uh, rootkit. Uh, so apart from rootkit, yeah, of course, uh, the, the firmware vulnerabilities will be there. Uh, then BIOS, uh, UEFI update tampering. What is this UEFI? We'll just talk in a while. And then insider threat as well. So, so one of your component is getting impacted, okay? And that component is just waiting. The moment you connect, uh, so to to your advanced network and all, it will start acting and it will impact other system in the network. It will not impact. It will not do any kind of bad behavior on the system where it is residing. So you will always feel, oh, that system is clean. Nothing wrong with that system. Okay. So yeah. Now that was about BIOS. Now UEFI, it's working and the tough path. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, so then later, uh, based on the BIOS challenges and limitation, UEFI is, uh, was coined. It is an advanced version, and all what you not see in BIOS, everything is there. But of course, security gaps are still there. Okay. So uh, UEFI is programmable. It's uh, basically come from the OEM only. Okay, uh, and then a developer can add their application. They can do the uh, configuration change. They can add their own driver. That's why you see you add some new 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 device, and uh, you can see the driver will be uh, there, and uh, that the software and the OS will start supporting your uh, new added uh, peripheral device. Yeah, and then. Um, yeah, what is the difference? So uh, this UEFI is having basically uh, platform related data table. So we can understand it's like a table which will have all the details. And uh, for the respective detail, for the respective peripherals, uh, it will map it accordingly and then it will start supporting that. 
then uh, okay what are the advantage uh, of uh, uefi uh, the boot mode of course 32 bit uefi and 64 bit so earlier that uh, one of the major challenge was uh, with bios was as it was 16 bit only so the larger storage it was was not supported so let's say for example you have uh, uh, some some external storage which is beyond 2 to 2, 2 tb then it was not supported but now with uefi you can have uh, I think uh, more than petabyte support, yeah. So, so that is supportive, and of course, uh, whatever new peripheral uh, device you bring, uh, that can be supported uh, by the driver. Multiple OS supported are there, and then programmable compatibility, so you can program as per your own wish. And security, yeah, here security, uh, they have their own uh, specific protocol uh, that is uh, UEFI protocol, and then it prevent uh, basically uh, hacker to play with the vulnerability. So if we move forward, it's a quick comparison uh, about the UEFI and BIOS. So booting, uh, just want to highlight <laughs> the booting speed only. Uh, it is very slow, uh, the BIOS as compared to uh, UEFI. And uh, the pl uh, platform compatibility and the security. So BIOS security was uh, no, no, not available. And uh, uh, the, the, the UEFI support your cryptographic uh, method of authentication, yeah. So now LibreBoot, come to the main point. Yeah, of course, there is a very less content available for on the LibreBoot. That's why the uh, community need uh, support to encourage. But now, then, then we think if uh, there is, uh, why LibreBoot, if you do have UEFI, then, and of course, uh, even uh, I acknowledge, and uh, th th there is a fact that uh, LibreBoot, uh, if you compare LibreBoot and UEFI, UEFI is the most advanced, uh, most advanced basically firmware, which support in every manner. Then why LibreBoot? Why LibreBoot? That's a question, valid question, right? So if we see the, the, the global connect and the global system, still few reports suggest uh, that around 40% uh, of your systems are still running on the BIOS. So it means you have risk. And one of the report uh, also suggest that every or mostly, mostly every organization, they have around five to 10% ratio of the system which is still running on BIOS, even though other systems are running on UEFI. What are those systems? So if it means the systems are still are running on BIOS, they have security threat and it's a big threat for any organization, right, for in terms of security perspective. So what are those systems? So uh, those are legacy systems, those might be, you know, uh, in a system which is uh, set up in the complex environment so that you cannot even uh, take a risk of thinking to replace those systems, right? So then how to mitigate that risk? So for that mitigation, actually most of the system, uh, which is generally BIOS, that can be upgraded uh, using, uh, you know, uh, core boot. Yeah, you can use core boot because most of the system are compatible with that one. And uh, this Libre boot is basically uh, extended uh, version of the, you can say, uh, core boot. And in, in layman language, what I'll say is uh, like uh, Ubuntu is extended version of Linux. In layman language, I'm saying. So we have a UI, we have plug and play, drag and drop, easy navigation. In the similar manner, basically, uh, this LibreBoot is uh, uh, meaning uh, for your core boot, yeah? So this LibreBoot use core boot for hardware install. And, and another thing is uh, core boot is uh, difficult to build install uh, for a non-techy person, whereas LibreBoot, it's easy, yeah. Uh, that the documentation is available. It is very short uh, document, but it is available, yeah. And uh, yeah, if you talk about uh, LibreBoot further, then it is basically fully control, uh, fully initialized memory controller, and you take full control of that, right? So even though I'm not saying there is no risk, uh, uh, if you have LibreBoot in terms of security vulnerability, there is no risk at all. Risk is still there, but you had basically reduced the risk. In BIOS, it was totally exposed. Now you had reduced the risk. So let's understand what we can do with it, and from where we should start. Yeah, so uh, the major uh, criteria uh, or, or the major uh, principle what should adopt, uh, what we should adopt is wherever we do have BIOS, at least we should start thinking uh, to upgrade uh, with the LibreBoot. Yeah, I can say core boot, but uh, why I'm saying LibreBoot is because LibreBoot is more flexible, uh, more easy uh, for non techy person also. So these are the few uh, basic uh, Q uh, and A type of thing, FQA. Uh, the, the, uh, again, uh, this information is available on the LibreBoot uh, website as well. So where to start? There is a uh, portal over there, and uh, that portal is having all the information. Okay. Now I'll try to highlight that point as well. Ki why sh we should do that? 
okay so but th that portal is having all the information libreboot.org uh, that uh, what are where it support and what it knows hi uh, here another thing is again uh, good news and bad news so nowadays uh, when uh, this uh, oem which is basically intel and ibm mostly those are the giant player in the world uh, okay for hardware manufacturer uh, initially there was no support from that those uh, this intel this this like you know uh, uh, I, I can say big eagle these are uh, two big eagle they never support they never ever supported for uh, any kind of open uh, firmware but later they realize the like maybe the open source community is getting increased because of that because of that actually they started supporting and now whatever intel uh, s compatible systems are there they do support this one so for that what they did is they they, they introduced some of the uh, binaries okay and those those binaries are basically supportive to libreboot so that is good news bad news is again intel google and other oem are not cooperative uh, these guys were never cooperative and those are not cooperative for any kind of oem firmware in in, in that context only okay uh, so this information is available the goal is to support as much as hardware uh, uh, okay so now uh, still uh, there are limitations of libreboot that libreboot uh, don't support most of the hardware is still uh, there is a limited uh, hardware which is getting supported by libreboot okay and uh, uh, another goal is to just make uh, core boot easy to use so whatever devices are running with the core boot that can be basically tra um, transition to libreboot easily okay ca so then can libreboot be the game changer i think it can be uh, only the thing is uh, as a community uh, contributor we have to support and considering that factor that security is the most important part and wherever there is a bios uh, based system is running it's quite difficult or impossible to mo move those things out from the system but at least we can try to make them secure and we can uh, go for a safe and clean environment where we do have other challenges where we can put focus on instead of these challenges right so yes it can be and again the opinion expressed in my own opinion there is nothing related to my organization point of view and all yeah so that's all folks uh, thank you so much that's it and thank you.